The topic of today is visual communication. I think all of you know visual communication and using visual communication quite extensively. When it comes to registering for a workshop on visual communication, you begin to think twice, oh, do I know this or I don't know this. By the end of the workshop, you need to tell me whether you follow. A tech specialist. I work for many international schools. I've been tra traveling the world. I was working two years in different schools across. And I've learned many things, both in technology and ICT integration. Can you hear me there? Yeah? Okay. Now, this is one of the concepts which over a period of my research, I've been able to bring out some of these points in a classroom. Now, visual communication, when you talk about visual communication, you generally think about an art classroom, right? Something in an art classroom. This is not what I'm looking for. Uh, I've been studying different educational systems across the world and you would notice that if you look at the Finland education system, they say children should play more and then study less. So they should experience from playing. They come encounter a couple of risks as they play and then they learn from those risks. Yeah, This is their idea. You have the Singapore uh, they believe in technology. They say we need a lot of technology. So literally they put all kinds of technology in a classroom to see that a children is prepared for tomorrow. Now, if you look at educational system, I mean, if you look at the big picture, what are we looking at? We're looking at something like getting to a future job or an occupation of a child. So my main question is, are we in the right track with our educational system? Now you look at around, what do you see? You see things like uh, uh, televisions all over your houses, everywhere. You see smartphones, you see internet of things, you see gaming, you see e-market. There's a lot, lot, lot of these things, jobs are all related to visual communication, right? Everything, most of them are related to visual communication. I think human beings, we had food, clothing, shelter was primarily the important thing in the earlier days. Today, I think we have most of them are middle class people. More than 80% of the people are middle class people. When they get back home, they need some kind of an entertainment. They need a social media. They need a, a smartphone and things like this. So all this carry a lot of visual communication. So if you are preparing a child for tomorrow, we must prepare them with a lot of visual communication. Now, we're talking about in the past, what happens? That currently what we are following is this approach. You see, we try to give less to the computer and take more out of the computer. In this way, actually, we are not making a brain, a brain of the child smart. We try to get everything spoon fed it and ultimately the child's brain is not working you know because he, he expects the computer to do everything now using a re reverse engineering technique it should be different in the field of education don't make a child dependent on a calculator or a computer let him focus on what to do so the reverse engineering is like this the child should be able to give more to a computer and expect less output from the computer so this is what a new approach which most schools are going in and it is an international way of thinking so that your brain grows. Now taking multiple intelligence, I don't have to go in the depth of multiple intelligence right from your training period of uh, your teacher's training period and other in several workshops you would have come across multiple intelligence. Multiple intelligence is a teaching technique in classroom where you use different techniques, integrating them so that the learning happens like visual, musical, kinesthetic, interpersonal, linguistic, mathematical, and so on. Yeah, this is the approach used in multiple intelligence in a classroom. Now I'm trying to integrate visual communication into a classroom along with different multiple intelligence. Let's take a look at it one by one. Now visuals, picture smart. Now, very often, can you see that a digital collage has got 
lot that a child can actually do in a classroom. Now, if a child has got a laptop or you are in uh, the lab, uh, giving a group project or a single project on digital collage is pretty helpful because, uh, and so very often we think, do we have sufficient softwares to run a digital collage in a classroom? And we also think that, do we have the enough skill to do that? I think every computer today comes with Word, PowerPoint. Using Word and PowerPoint itself, you can excel it to do a good digital collage in a classroom. Just five tips which I would like to show you. One is cropping to shape, wrap text, edit shape points, rotate and forward and backward. Let's take a look at this. Now, I just imported four pictures. This is what happens to all common man. The moment you import a picture, you see that the pictures don't go collide over each other. They're not able to make it into different shapes. And how, how do we make a collage out of it? Now, taking this into picture, let's say, I can't move this on top of this. It only moves left and right. So what am I doing is I'm clicking on the picture. I'm taking picture tools. And then here, what I'm doing is text wrap text. I'm clicking on and saying through. That means I can place images anywhere right on top and so on. I'm going to do the same thing to all these pictures. I'm going to say wrap text through, wrap text through. So it makes me easy to work with these pictures. This is the first thing I do. And you would notice that the picture becomes more flexible. I can click on this picture and drag it on top of the other picture. Can you see that? One on top of the other. This is one point. Another point, can you see that you can send it to front or bring it to back? You notice that? Yeah. So in this way, you can make your collage of the way you want it. Now, Taking into consideration when you're talking about collage, the pictures should be in different shapes and sizes. I know everyone knows how to enlarge the size of a picture or reduce the size of a picture. But when we are talking about cropping it, let's go on this. There's a picture tool. I go to crop, crop to shape. Now you notice I can choose any shape that I need. You can just place any shape you need and that picture crops to that shape. Do you see this? Now that I made that, you see, I can place it according to how I need it. So, you don't need many tools i just taught you three to four one is crop to shape another is converting a picture with text wrap through and you're able to do it so now if i want to give a title on top all i do is i insert a text box and i can place that text box on top of the picture So whatever text I do, it comes this way. You can even take this, take format shapes, and then you choose fill and say no fill. Can you see that the text is directly on the photograph? So it becomes part of the photograph. So there are only five small basic points which you can actually communicate with the student along with your other lessons. It's not going to take much time but ultimately you'll notice the outcome of the work done by a child will be great. My focus of today's lesson is not to see that the presentations of teachers is fantastic. It is to see that every student is able to communicate in this way. 
every student will be able to express himself in this way. Now, this was for digital collage. The next thing, very important thing is whenever you're teaching something in a classroom, you would notice that any concept you want to give it across to the student has to be repeated several times before he learns. Let's say you want to introduce a world map to a child. The first time you show a world map, he won't know anything about it. He goes home, he will not speak about it to his parents and so on. But try and use a puzzle. Let's take a look at this. Now, if you're using a puzzle, now I click on the puzzle. You notice there's a simple procedure. The child can go on the internet, pick up a world map of his choice, and he says here, he can choose how the puzzle should be easy or tough. Choose the shape of the puzzle, and then if you want to give tags, you can give tags. I'm not a robot. And then create. So here, this is a problem here. Mountain of hills. Uh, can I use this? Can I use this? And is this also? No. Okay. This is where sometimes I could fail. Okay. <laughs> Now, create. So when I have created this, you would notice that a puzzle has been formed. Now, if you incorporate this, this is good both in high school as well as in middle school, where students can make use of this puzzle, they get pretty interested. Very often what happens is, because of the lack of interest, a child fails to learn. But here it's more of a game. You're teaching a concept of world map. The child is picking up his own choice of a map. He's making a puzzle and he's giving it to his group or in his, in his own group he will play. And not only that, he might take it a free homework without you giving a homework. He might go back and try to play this with his parents and friends. So you notice motivation of the learning which that takes place. Now let me go to the next one. In multiple intelligence, the next one is musical, uh, that is to be musically smart. There are a couple of things which I would like to share with you, my experience. You, most of you may be aware of cloud computing where you can store your files and things like that. There are special places where you can uh, store your sound uh, uh, like songs or it can be audio recording, a speech, etc. All these things can be put on to your sound cloud or you can have your own sound cloud in school where you can actually put information. One very uh, free software which uh, some of you will be aware of is Audio City which you can take a note or I will give you this print you can understand. Audio City is a free software which allows you to edit audio. Now you may be asking me the question, when I have a mobile phone which I can do videos or I have a video uh, where I can take videos, why sound? See, when you're talking about a literature lesson or an English lesson, you're talking about reading, writing, listening and uh, th things like that in four components and you give the child in different components, right? So similarly, you should be able to break down components so that the ch child understands better, not only that. Every time if he's going to get take a video, even that interesting topic is going to be boring, right? So you should be able to do different every time. So if you are a person who can give different stuff, different times, it becomes interesting for a child. And that is why at point, at certain times you use an audio. So you can ask him, give him an audio exercise, like uh, a couple of exercises I have given is, I have broken down into small groups. I said the world is weak. Okay, this group this week is for you. So I do that for a month or two months where this group will research on the internet, go on Google, uh, listen to YouTube news of the world, pick up information and they will verbally speak it out. They will verbally speak it out. So I would generally make a group with different multiple la language group like, you know, people taking French, German, etc. And uh, what we would do is uh, each one will take bits of uh, parts of the news and speak in different languages. It has been recorded and it has been telecasted in your school website. 
or in the registration period in the morning. This is one of the ways which you can do. You wanted to ask something? I just wanted to ask, did you mean audacity? Audio city. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, I'm familiar with audacity. Uh, this is audio city. Okay. Audio city for sound editing. Okay, this is one way. Another exercise that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, uh, very often we generally do many things quite blank. But when you can combine many things together, it becomes pretty interesting. I love this activity of going to the zoo. Not because children don't go to zoo. Every parent, once the child is born, they take them to zoo several times. The school takes them to zoo several times. But this is, you take them in a project, you take them with a goal, with an objective, tell them this is what it is. You need to take pictures of, let's say you can say different, you can even classify the animals in each group, you can say you do this kind of animal, you do this kind of animal, you do wild animals, you do tamed animals, you do uh, so and so. You know, you get different classifications, you get different groups. So what is happening is he's learning to classify. He is learning to use a camera where he knows to use a camera but he is focusing on that particular object and he is picking up information. So while he is able to pick up information graphically, on the other hand, he is not going to record the sound of the uh, animal in the same device. He is going to use a recording device and record the sound of the animal. So you are getting uh, different data, different components in different format. Now he uses PowerPoint, he puts a picture in, he adds the sound together and he runs the presentation. When he is doing this, you would notice he is trying to bring different sources of information in different pattern and the learning experience is fantastic. You know, one because it has got kinesthetic because you are taking him out, another because it has got knowledge, it has got classification, it has got technology and a lot of integration together. Try this exercise once, it will be very good for you. Now, going to further just kinesthetic. Now, we are trying to integrate technology, we are trying to integrate visual communication and we are trying to integrate, uh, what do you call it, uh, <coughs> different educational theories. <coughs> beyond just a classroom textbook and uh, notes and lecture sessions. Children are using different ways of doing things. You can get different formats, give different shapes from the internet images. Pick them up, take a printout, put them on a uh, chart or stick it down on the floor and ask the child to do a small activity. So it, it uh, initiates the child to be very active. You know actually uh, if you keep your computer on for some time it will go to sleep mode, it will be shut down, right? The same is the case, if, you're, if the children is going to sit in the front and you are going to keep lecturing to them, they are going to sleep down, they are going to shut down. That too for uh, sitting for 6 hours and 7 hours. But every time if there is something different and something new, the challenge for learning keeps coming up. Now, going to the fourth point, intrapersonal, people smart. Now I think this is another controversial topic where there is a lot of debates which we can happen. I am not concluding on that but I am trying to voice my opinion. What I am trying to say is there is a lot of social media, uh, there is Facebook, there is uh, uh, what do you call it, Skype, there is uh, um, lots of chat groups, WeChat groups and Line and so many other things. So now very often teachers, parents and community and the adults suppress the children by saying you cannot use them, only the adults can use them. You are giving, taking away their right. Yeah, we are not uh, justifying that. If this child uh, has to go, once he goes to a graduate position, you would notice that he has to write 3000 to 4000 words uh, for his uh, college application. When he is doing 4000 words for college application as a counselor, if you tell him to do it, he might take 3 hours, 4 hours one week, two days or some people even take months together to write a college app, uh, essay for the college application. Right? Do you agree with me as teachers? Yeah? Sometimes. Okay. Now take a look at it. Give a mobile, uh, give a smartphone with uh, social media in it to a child for one hour. He would have typed more than 3000 words in that one hour with his friends chatting. Uh, you cannot say chatting is wrong. You are giving more exercises for reading, writing, listening but you are not allowing the type of exercise the child wants. But what I 
am trying to say, if you allow him to do that with a proper uh, monitoring of the system, then things will be better. What I am trying to say is, as a classroom, it's not just the social media, it's not just the mobile that you are controlling. You are controlling many things to run a classroom. So if you can control so many things, why can't you control a social media and a technology device with a child? Same thing. Now, as an example of my daughter, there are, uh, I used to, my wife used to always tell me, don't give mobile, don't do this, don't do that and things like that. But I used to be very uh, different. I said, no, she should have a smartphone. When others can have, she'll feel jealous that she doesn't have one. Two, I am, now she's going into a hostel and she's going to go and stay in a hostel now. But if I don't give it in an earlier stage, she would have got it by herself when she's in the hostel and other things. She would do what she wants. But that since I have given her three to four years back, I have undergone all the processes which I were as bullying. I have consoled her, I have told her about it, uh, chatting and uh, many things. I have gone through it. I had the opportunity to train her, to be with her, to tell her this is right, this is wrong. Right? So why don't we look at it in that way? So what are the things that we can actually tell them? One of the things I told them, told her is the language style. Sometimes you know she will make friends in the local uh, community and she, going to the local language which a local person may not understand uh, English so much. She might even use that language in English with losing her vocabulary skills. And also most students what they do, they land up texting in smaller text and short forms, la, lu and many other type of things. So this actually what actually happens is spoils the style of learning. So now, if we are able to teach them, monitor them, tell them, make them understand, and if they are able to follow that style, you would notice a world of difference in what they are learning. Linguistic word smart. In linguistic word smart, now very often when we teach a chapter, what is the outcome? How does the outcome come? The outcome comes from trying to get some information from what you have taught them. So when you're looking at this, uh, you give them a print copy of the lesson that you have taught them and what will actually happen is this child would have come out with a couple of terminologies. Tell them to highlight the terminologies in what was being taught. And that terminology, if you ask them to use a word created like this, it's, uh, I can send you the link. And uh, you just need to type the topic which is there. Once he's got, I just paste it here. So, next. That says 2 to 15 characters. Okay. So now, here you can type out the words which you want to work with. So when you practically tell a child to try and highlight and do something, he doesn't get interested. But when you put it with some of these topics like this, the interest in the child grows. He not only is going to do it. You see here, now you've just quickly created this and you can play with this. Can you find out something which we did? The words what we did? Can someone find out? Huh? Where is God now? Here. Here. Uh, One more. Okay. Let me not play the game now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now actually you see what happens is a child gets very much interested, whether it is a high school student or a middle school student or even a lower grade student. A lower grade student would probably like it because they play with the kids, you know. Uh, that's what if you talk, this is going in line with your Finland educational system where you try to be playing more games with the children and children learn from games. Now, if you go one step ahead, 
you can think about a crossword. So in the first place, we were able to get the terminologies from the topic which you were teaching. In the second phase, if you go to a puzzle, you will notice that he is getting the terminology and he is getting the description of the terminology or he is able to write an answer. So in a crossword puzzle, you see, I just keep this information so that I don't consume much time. The words are put here and the clues are put here. In other words, these are the definitions and these are the terminology. So once a child gets the definition and terminology, he has understood the topic you're trying to teach him. As I told you earlier, repetition helps you to learn. So a child is able to repeat this a number of times using different techniques. Repetition becomes boring if you're using the same technique. When you start using different techniques, you will notice that the child begins to learn. Now, in this puzzle, it not only helps the child to create the puzzle, he's able to share this puzzle. He can play it, or he can share it with his friends, or it can be shared, interchanged with different teams. And you can still play it. Can you see that? You can put the text into the box. You can see your answer key. And you can also check your answers. These are some of the things. In the previous workshop, they asked me, can we do this in another language? Yeah, maybe, yes, because these clues, what is there, it will accept the language. Even this, it would accept. It should work. Yeah? All you need to do is go into Google Translate, put your English version into it, and try your language translated. You get the text. Now, this part of it, is a small thing. What I'm trying to get at this point is to become dynamic the way he applies his brain rather than giving a math worksheet, a simple math work worksheet, uh, which is again black and white, again pen and pencil, again a blackboard. If you can use something, then using these things are you have to find them as a resource from the internet okay this is something lovers just try this out pay attention to what it is telling and then try it out okay exercise number one multicolored text we're going to show you words written in different colors proceed to say aloud the name of the color in which each of the words on the list is written ready go Loud, try it out, try it out, loud, everybody. Try it out. Green. Louder. Louder. Red. Green. Use a high voice. Yellow. Red. Use a high voice. Red. Black. Blue. Green. Green. Blue. Blue. Yes, it isn't that easy. Yellow. Green. Blue. 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 So now uh, the point here is that uh, you should use your voice as loud as possible <laughs> yeah. and you must try to get it. Why I say loud as possible is I went and going back to the previous point like a computer when you don't use it for some time what happens? It goes to sleep mode. Our brain is a computer it will go to sleep mode. Very often you don't know what is happening in the child's mind. You may be trying to teach him thinking that he is learning and listening to you is physically present and is mentally absent. His mind will be somewhere else. But he'll be going through the entire chapter, the entire day, the whole week, the whole year, he gets nothing out of it. Yeah? When you put some lot of excitement into a classroom like this, they begin to wake up. Right? Even the sleepy guy, wait, what's happening? Yeah? So you begin to get a lot of involvement of a child. Next, <coughs> we were talking about the, job, the future job markets which we need and education should be aligned based on future job markets how many of you say what I'm saying is right yeah so when you're talking about that it's not just job job is not just the life but that is part of it and yes we need that we also have a social life right a family life a social life a community life <coughs> now going into that I think 
we have to make a lot of connections with nature a lot of connections with nature and then uh, gardening is uh, one of the examples good examples you can uh, take the child out for gardening in a park or in your school grow trees around and things like that moreover in some schools I've been I've been to one of the schools where there you have a lot of this swarm there's a pond there's a swarm and things like that children take photographs of that or may maybe uh, go play with it or, and things like that. They're connecting to nature. They're connecting to nature. They begin to think about water. They think about society. They think about global warming. They think about many things. So that is also builds a full characteristics of a person. When you're doing this, you, if you follow a pattern, a prototype, a protocol, it will help you uh, for the child to follow that every time you do it. You know, like, you know, we need to create an interest in the child. Once you create an interest in a child, you will see that he automatically will research on that. If you are going to do gardening and you are going to ask the question, how does a plant grow? Then he is going to research on that to find out how the plant is growing. Yeah. So what are the fertilizers? What are the things that he can do? So he is bringing to about a couple of things which goes into that. And he is naturally documenting it because he wants to make, it, uh, make a presentation for you and communicate to you. Then subsequently you get a feedback, a review and they begin to act. If you do an exercise like this, you would notice they will act in real life. Otherwise, when we talk about plants and how plants grow in a chapter in a book, it's forgotten once you close and they go outside to play the next moment. But if they go through this cycle, uh, you would notice that they have, you have really kindled an interest in learning and they will act upon it water shortage, global warming, etc. when the child has spent more time involved in that. The procedure in which it goes on. Now interpersonal and self-smart. Self-smart is depends on what skills you have. We are here talking about skill oriented. We are not saying that knowledge alone is important. Both knowledge as well as skill is important. So the most the skillful a person is better his opportunities of a market value for him. So now I'm talking about some technology skills here where I notice many presentations when I walk across for ICT integration in different schools where I work. I notice that most of them use all these random animations like appear, fade, fade and float. I don't see any meaning in what they are actually doing. I just get yeah, distraction on the screen. Now let's think ahead of it. Now, there are other things, advanced things in PowerPoint. Can you see that? That was a bounce. If you think of the applications like Newton's law of gravitational force, yeah, and if a child is using that kind of an animation for his presentation, at that point, it makes more sense. So now, you can introduce these kind of animations to a child, and he will be able to apply his knowledge and skill for shape, round, can you see that? There's a loop and there's, this is the custom path, the last one. This can be applied to pictures, shapes, text, or even smart art and a couple of other things. Now, when we are applying this, it is very important to remember, I give you a small, simple project. If you give one or two projects to a child, then automatically you will notice that they will start bringing out their own kinds of projects which will be really worthwhile when they make it in the class. I believe in running a class more as a facilitator than a teacher. If I can facilitate the learning of a child, it is more than teaching him because he can learn learn better because he's a self-teacher is better so when you teach give him some few points and from there he can take on right and that is why facilitating helps now in this i used another only five small techniques to make this this is the voyage of Voskaragama, right when you're talking about that chapter when the history is over most people most children don't like history when they come back learning nothing if you notice if you teach in this way he is Readdressing the issue several times. Taking the content, he is doing a small thing. He just, I just put a PowerPoint background. I got this image from the internet. Anybody can get that, and you can just make a background. I think all of you do a PowerPoint background. 
And in the previous slide, I showed you a path animation, right? Where you can draw a path and it can animate. So this path has been drawn and a small image from the image gallery of Google, a ship has been taken and notice what happens. The ship moves across the path. So this way, if it is a group or an individual project, though it may not take much time, you're actually striking a spark in the brain of the child where he's able to learn, he's able to understand, he's able to make a presentation. Now, taking into this as a consideration, you have other visual communication projects which you can put across, like newsletters, flyers, invitations, certificates, calendar, brochure, and report. Now, if these all look as big terms, and we think these are all part of a college. It's not college, it's pre-college. These days, many students cannot afford to go to college. They try and get a job just after schooling. So if we can give them the skill and knowledge, they can do a big job. Now, let's look at this in Microsoft Word. If you go to Word, it's pretty simple. Not the way we think. If I say File New, and I say, uh, let's say, what was it we were talking of? Uh, timeline. You notice a list of different patterns of timeline comes. So there are different categories here, like timelines, charts, business, education, sales, budgets, databases, presentations, etc. So you can use this in a world of topics, maybe science, maybe business, any kind of a topic you would like to add this on to. In a classroom. Next, we were talking about the, job, the future job markets which we need. And education should be aligned based on future job markets. How many of you say what I'm saying is right? Yeah. So, when you're talking about that, it's not just job. Job is not just the life, but that is part of it. And yes, we need that. We also have a social life, right? A family life, a social life, a community life. <coughs> now, going into that, I think we have to make a lot of connections with nature. A lot of connections with nature. And then, the gardening is one of the examples, good examples. You can uh, take the child out for gardening in a park or in your school, grow trees around and things like that. Moreover, in some schools I've been, I've been to one of the schools where there you have a lot of this swam, there's a pond, there's a swam and things like that. Children take photographs of that or may, maybe uh, go play with it or, and things like that. They're connecting to nature, they're connecting to nature. They begin to think about water, they think about society, they think about global warming, they think about many things. So that is also builds a full characteristics of a person. When you're doing this, if you follow a pattern, a prototype, a protocol, it will help you uh, for the child to follow that every time you do it. You know, like, you know, we need to create an interest in a child. Once you create an interest in a child, you will see that he automatically will research on that. If you're going to do gardening and you're going to ask the question, how does a plant grow? Then he is going to research on that to find out how the plant is growing. Yeah. So what are the fertilizers? What are the things that he can do? So he is bringing to about a couple of things which goes into that and he is do naturally documenting it because he wants to make it, uh, make a presentation for you and communicate to you. Then subsequently you get a feedback, a review and they begin to act. If you do an exercise like this, you would notice they will act in real life. Otherwise, when we talk about plants and how plants grow in a chapter in a book, it's forgotten once you close and they go outside to play the next moment. But if they go through this cycle, uh, you would notice that they have, you have really kindled an interest in learning and they will act upon it. Water shortage, global warming, etc. When the child has spent more time involved in that. Interpersonal and self smart. Now, this is where you notice that some students are extremely smart. It's because he can do everything using a technology. He is faster than the other person. 
He's able to get type information fast. He's able to print it out fast. He's able to replicate it fast. He's able to make a best presentation. So we need to be skill-based learning than knowledge-based learning. But we are not saying that knowledge is uh, to be left aside. It is said that knowledge is outdated every 20 seconds. So when knowledge is outdated, both skill and knowledge needs to be put together in order to execute something. Now when we are talking about this, uh, uh, this is uh, something which is pretty uh, common. You would notice that uh, when any teacher or a student does a presentation, they stick to uh, animation uh, concepts like appear, fade, fly in, etc, etc. All these animations and things like that, a whole lot of powerpoints, things flying in, things flying out, uh, jigsaw puzzle and so many other things. But what is the meaning of those animations? There is nothing. It is just a distraction on the screen. Now there are more higher intelligence oriented things in PowerPoint and uh, Microsoft Word which you should use. Like for instance, this one is a bouncing ball. Can you see that? It, uh, it is a power, it is a way of animation which you can use. Let's say if you're talking in terms of Newton's law of uh, gravitational force, a ball falling from a tree. Yeah. So if the child is going to look at animations with a concept, with an idea, the output of that would be great. So you know there are other animations which I will just quickly show you which you can use in PowerPoint. This you can find in the same, I don't have to demonstrate that because you can find it in the same place where you find all other animations. Just try it out and apply it in daily life, in daily lessons in your classroom. You see this turns and this has got a shape, uh, this is loops. Yeah, can you see that loop? And the last one is a custom path animation. It's a most very interesting animation part of it is the custom path. Make use of this custom path. I got a sample, you can use many other samples which you want. Now the simple, this sample is pretty easy for you to create, not for you, the child. As I was readdressing over a period of time, my objective is not for you to teach. You become a facilitator. You become a facilitator. You give the child the idea. Let the child come out with a teaching lesson. Let the child come out with something. That is a learning process. The outcome of that learning process is going to be helpful to us. Now if you look at this, I have used only three uh, things which you are using in daily life. But in those presentations, we do not know how much meaning it has got compared to this presentation. In this presentation, he is uh, the Vasco da Gama's <coughs> Voyage of Vasco da Gama. Now in Voyage of Vasco da Gama, the background I have given that and now you see, uh, I have used that path animation which I showed on top. I drew the path, just drew the path, took this object from uh, Google, put that object and it has still done that path animation. Can you see that? So if you give this ideology to your classroom, your children, each children, in each uh, different chapters, they will think differently, they will act differently and they will produce different presentations which is going to be meaningful and sensible in a classroom. Now, coming to the uh, different other projects of what you can use in visual communication is uh, things like newsletters, flyers, invitations, certificates, calendars, brochures, reports. Now when you look at it, some of you might think that, oh, oh my goodness, there's a lot of work in this, putting these designs and titles and formats and things like this. There are easy ways of doing things. You can use Microsoft Word. Uh, in Word, you say file new and then whatever you want, you just go and type in the search aspect, time line. You see, it gives you a number of timelines. So based on the chapter, based on the topic, the child can choose which timeline she wants to use and just make the necessary modifications. Uh, Some, this, this I found it pretty interesting, like you know, uh, when you go uh, look at appointments, a child could uh, choose this weekly appointment or a monthly appointment and he can type out in each class, this is the homework I have. He can do it digitally or he can do it manually, uh, take a printout and do it. So there are lots and lots of interesting, uh, I'm not just going to play these things but uh, to, if you're talking in terms of predefined templates, 
which you would like to use for early element, elementary school as well as middle school there are two different softwares like one is inspiration another is, Kids, another is Kidspiration you can use that kind of a software and I will Medina found that lots of reading and training is hard for our brains. Reading takes time as we have to identify certain features in letters to be able to read them. Our brains interpret every letter as a picture. Reading lots of words creates a bottleneck which actually chokes the brain. Do you agree with it? Yeah? Okay. And this is inspiration. Comprehend, create, communicate, achieve more. Welcome to inspiration the ultimate thinking and learning tool. Inspiration's powerful diagram and map views support a full range of visual learning methodologies, webs, a world of template there, and this is Inspiration is the more, visual more way to explore more and understand type. words, numbers, and concepts. Designed specifically for students in kindergarten to fifth grade. Kids for... Okay. So those are two softwares if you want you can buy for the school and you can use it. Uh, but if you want to use without paying you can use Word and PowerPoint with all the tools which I told you. And visual communication level 2 this is my next workshop which I am working on like presentation and uh, authoring, uh, video authoring and broadcast, digital storytelling and so on. So if you find the time you can always come.